So now you have your objectives, you have your measures. So the next question is, what are your deliverables? Because you further need to deconstruct your objectives in the form of deliverables. So project deliverable refers to specific output created as the result of work performed during the course of a project. So there are some important aspect when it comes to project deliverables and these are deliverables must be within the scope of the project you need to consider the stakeholders external or internal and they must agree to the deliverable as well the deliverables must be the result of deliberate work deliverables must have a definite role in accomplishing the project's objective so now we see the relationship First you had your vision statement, then you have broken down the vision statement in the form of some objectives, then you have further broken down your objectives into the form of deliverables. The next thing that comes into play is your success criteria. So the project success criteria refer to measurable terms of what should be the outcome of the project that is acceptable to the end user, your customers and the stakeholders. And in other words, the project's success factors consist of activities or elements that are required to ensure successful completion of the project. See, you have a great vision. You have further comprehended your vision into objectives and you have some deliverables and you have delivered the projects, let's say. But was it successful? Was this project successful at all? Have you been able to make the impact which was intended at the very beginning? That is what you need to be able to measure with your success criteria. So to measure your success criteria, three things, these are called rule of thumb and you should keep in mind. The first one is the iron triangle. Now, if you refer back to our discussion from week one, we talked about the iron triangle, which included your cost, your scope and time, which should all ensure the quality of your project. So when you're thinking about your success criteria, think about have you considered the iron triangle or not? The second important thing is the realized benefits of your project. Because once you have delivered the project, has the project been able to realize the benefit compared to where your organization was before implementing the project? And the third one is perhaps the most important thing is your stakeholder satisfaction. Because at the end of the day, the project is being implemented to improve your stakeholders. Now, it could be improving your stakeholders uh, financial aspect. It could be improve stakeholders uh, value. It could be various other things that might be improved. But fundamentally, the project's objective is to benefit the stakeholders. So whether your stakeholders are satisfied or not, that is also one of the most important success criteria. All of this information I am giving to you, I know it's a lot to take on, especially when you are listening to all of these for the very first time. You must be thinking, oh, this guy is just like talking like a robot, like he's just like speaking so many jargons and, and things which I don't even understand, or maybe not. But my aim is not to make the lectures very lengthy, so that's why I'm just trying to condense it into a very short form. I'm hoping that during the course of our Monday's discussion, we will be able to discuss all of this in more detail. So one of the most important aspect of the initiation phase is to identify the stakeholders and understand their needs and wants, and then be able to match your project's value with the stakeholder's value, whether the value speaks with each other or not. Now, I'm sure you all know what is stakeholder. We discussed about stakeholder in week one. We talked about internal stakeholder. We talked about external stakeholder as well. So if you're still unsure about what is stakeholder, let me just remind you that project stakeholders are individuals and organizations that are actively involved in the project or whose interests may be affected as a result of project execution or project completion. And in this diagram, it shows the existence of various stakeholders within the peripheral of your whole project. 
So your project will be the outer circle, which will be at the outer space, like it will cover all of your stakeholders. So your stakeholders would include your customers, your project sponsors, the departments involved into the project, and people who work on the project tasks. So during the initiation phase, you should be able to understand the specific requirement and the needs and wants of your stakeholders and whether your project is actually going to tick all of the boxes of their needs and wants or not. So once you have ticked all of these boxes, starting with your vision, then your objectives, then your deliverables, then your success criteria, then identifying your stakeholders, then finally you can put all of these things together into a very succinct document, a summarized document. This is called a project scope statement. So a project scope statement is the overall scope of your project. And typically it's a very short and summarized document where you have to put all of this information together so that you can share all of this information to your stakeholders. And when they see, everyone will understand, all right, this is what this project is going to deliver. So you'll come across various alternative version of the project scope statement. Uh, but essentially, these are the main aspects which will be important in the project scope statement. Number one is the project goals and objectives. So again, what are the goals and objectives that you need to underline? Second, the deliverables, the success criteria, project assumptions, so this would include the foreseeable future, what might happen, so some projections about future situations and some of the constraints. And that would include things from the Iron Triangle, that is your time and some other aspects like your budget, your stakeholders and etc. The final output of the initiation project is known as a project charter. So project charter outlines the entirety of project to help teams quickly understand the goals, tasks, timelines, and stakeholders. Now, depending on the nature of the organizations and the level of the bureaucracy that is existent within the organization, uh, the type of document that you need to submit at the beginning would vary. Some organizations, they don't even need to submit a project charter. A simple project scope would be enough. But in some other organizations, especially within the government organizations, it's very important that you submit a project charter. Now, I'm probably bringing my experience of working here within the Australian government where I have seen that even before submitting a project plan, it's very important to have those initiation documentation, which is known as the project charter. So um, it's very important to have a clear understanding of the like, you know, the project at, at the beginning. But if there are some private organizations it, where it's not super important to submit the project charter and project scope statement and things like that. So the project charter typically includes details like business needs, key participants, stakeholders, scope, objectives, overall goals, different milestones, risks, assumptions, team operating principles, uh, lessons learned, so the type and structure of the project charter may also vary depending on the nature of the organization or depending on the size and extent of the project. But in this slide, you can see I have incorporated some of the fundamental elements of project charter. So that includes the title, the scope overview, preliminary budget and spending approvals, business case, milestones and schedules, risks, assumptions, constraints, team operating principles, lessons learned, uh, signatures and commitments. So again, not all of these may be essential. Maybe you have to just incorporate information as much as you have available at the beginning, but this will be very important that you include all of this information into Project Charter. So I hope this overall discussion gives you a clear understanding about the initiation phase. Now, this discussion was very short, succinct, and very theoretical in nature. We did not have scope to discuss lots of examples, but I'm expecting to discuss examples during the course of our virtual catch-up on Mondays, where we will talk about some practical projects. We will look into their initiation documentations and the other considering factors, 
and I will also get you to engage work on those comments on those so that way you will have a clear understanding so good luck and I hope to see you all during our Monday's catch-up